Okay, folks, let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Wood, as we uh, do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord, O-R-D, hyphen, Oracle, O-R-C-L-E, dot com. That's Ord, hyphen, Oracle, dot com. Tim Ord, what's going on, brother? Yeah, I'm sorry, a little late. That's but, all um, right. We're shaking, we're baking. I'm telling you, man, what a market, huh? <laughs> yeah, what a market. So uh, we'll take a quick look at it here. Yeah. Uh, there's kind of a couple of things going on. Uh, the bigger trend's up, uh, but you kind of I think we're going to see a timeout here. You know, chart one yep. is worth looking at. Anyhow, okay. go up to one, two, third window up. It's a, six, it's a 63 day trend. Yes. And uh, anyhow, I, I colored there all in blue. The blue boxes, I guess. Yep. When that uh, three day trend or that three month trend, I guess the three month trend is above 1.2. And you can have short term pullbacks, but you can go back in history and they never come at uh, uh, long term highs. Okay. Uh, they, they can come in consolidations, but, you know, what you got to worry when the uh, trend gets down to below one on a six three day trend. And those are the uh, uh, light pink boxes. I kind of, if you can see those, a lot of times you I get can. that low on a six three day trend. Yes, you're probably looking at an intermittent term high, and that's what happened back at uh, last year's July high. Yes, that, that they got down to like right around one there, and we got that ten percent correction. But here we're standing at one point one two, so you can have a you know a, I don't know. Three, four, maybe five percent pullback here, but nothing. Probably not a ten percent or anything close to that. So what a great you know, little indicator. What, that's that's a cool indicator, yeah. Tim. Particularly because you know, I mean, this is a shake, rattle, and roll market. There's no doubt about it, man. <laughs> yeah, it is. So, so we're, we're so yeah, just just wait, trend, man. I guess. D d that's it. You we know, got hey, Listen, man. We got plenty of time. We'll take our time. We'll go through these. It's really important. We got our man, Mr. Tim Ward, folks from the Ord Oracle. Remember, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord, O-R-D hyphen Oracle dot com. Tim and I is going to be coming right back. We have the Dow up 321, Nasdaq's up 19, S&P's are up 23. Stay right there, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Ward, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growl and a problem with us out here. We're talking with Tim, and we're going through the, uh, the trend right now. Hey, Tim, so, you know... Uh, this is a beautiful indicator. I love this indicator. You know, we came down off the highs on this S&P, you know, and I'm sure you're going to get to it. But what do you think is happening inside this S&P right now? Uh, right now? Yes. Uh, well, what's going on right now? Uh, actually, we can, just, we can skip a chart here. Let's go to um, um, chart number four. Okay. I have it. Yeah. Yeah, this is the SPX or yeah SPX tilt uh, TLT ratio, which is okay. Uh, the, the, you know the top one is the RSI, the next one to down is the SPX tilt ratio. Yes, and so you know that last decline we had, uh, you know, oh um, what was that? Uh, January thirty first went down. Right. You know, if you notice that RSI. So let me put it this way: when the SPX and tilt ratio get out of whack, if it goes if that ratio goes up too fast or down too fast, then, and that's pretty much the market of the world. You know, you got the stocks and you got the bond market, and you can buy them both. Yes. And you get a really good picture of what the market may do, even for short term. So I'm thinking this, you know, the SPX has just gone up too fast compared to TLT. And, and previous when that's done, it usually is like a stretched rubber band. Wow. It just snaps back. That's cool, that's, right? That's, no, no, I that's get it. That's how I view it. Yep. Know? So, and and actually, when uh, the last time we got up there, uh, yeah, it looks like about January 31st, it kind of warned that pullback. And so now, you know, yesterday we had a, uh, I, I got it on the chart there, February 14th, 2024. Yes. Close was the. 70.50 right now we're like 71 72 area okay so uh we're, we're going up against something here and i thought we may close that gap we had monday you know market gap down i thought okay we may close that gap yes and if that ratio got back up around 70 or higher you know i'm going to get out of my long position 
Well, about a half hour ago, I sent out an email. I've been along uh, the SPX uh, since January 18th. Right. And so I'm getting out of that position, not for long term. No, I'm with you. That's why we, that's why I was asking, and we appreciate the feedback here, man, because it's so cool, man, you know, that you, you had that, you know, that, just like I said, the January 31st, which is not a big downdraft. Then we came down hard. And it's like, okay, you know, today I can see that the volume's contracting quite a bit. And what's happening is that we're closed Monday for the holiday, President's holiday. And what does happen, which I was telling the folks, is that what happens on the Northeast corridor, Tim, is that all the kids are off vacation. So what does happen is that tomorrow, even though the PPI is going to be coming out, it's probably going to be a slow day because there's so many people from the Northeast going on vacation coming down to Florida. <laughs> yeah, it's probably true. It's, it's, it's probably so true. funny. It, from living up there, this is a big vacation, folks. This is, this is like the vacation everyone waits for in the winter from the Northeast. It really is. You know what I mean? It's like one of these deals that, okay. So it, it's going to be intriguing. Yeah. But you can see that there's still, you know, that being said, there's not a lot of sellers out here, man. I mean, you know, that come down hard and fast, but, you know, you've taught us that, you know, when they go too fast, it's, you know, the same thing. And I, I can see the correlation that you're talking about with the TLT, you know, which is really cool, man. So, Yeah. As, 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 take a look at chart three. Okay. Um, there we you're, go. You're, you're talking yep. about, uh, you know, going down too fast. Uh, chart three is uh, the SPY. And what I want to point out there, you know, on that January 31st, I got... If you look at the volume chart there, yes, you know the, the that was a big spike in volume, uh, close to 100 percent compared to the previous days. Yeah, and I always said, you know, when the market jumps that fast in volume, it's like the exhaust move to the downside, and that turned out to be a short term low. Right, and the market rallies up, hits a new high, then uh, then Monday we have the same thing. We yes. have another spike in volume, right? Which means a uh, you know, short term low. That's the reason why I stayed along that position for now. But I got some other indicators. But anyhow. Yeah, no, hey, listen, man, this is a great trade, man. I was watching that trade because that's a, you know, that was a shake, rattle, roll, man. <laughs> I love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. But, but you, know, always, you know, even the past, back even 20 years ago, uh, you know, I was on your show. Yes. When you have these selling climaxes, you know, I don't know what percentage, but a high percentage of those selling climaxes are tested. So yes. once you see a spike in, somewhere, Normally, at some point, you're going to go back down and, and test that selling climax. So we had one on January 31st, and we had one on, well, wherever Monday was. Yeah, was the, exactly. The 12th or, yeah, right. 12th or something. I can't remember. Right. So so we go up, you know, and we got this uh, SPX tilt, uh, tilt ratio showing kind of a bearish sign. We got a three-day weekend coming up. Yep. And if you go into, into high, a lot of times if volume drops out, you know, is today high or is tomorrow? You know, I'm thinking it's one of the two days. I don't think, you know, Monday the market's closed. Right. I don't think the market's going to be up on a Tuesday or Tuesday after a three-day holiday. We'll have to wait and see. No, you no, know, I'm nothing. with you, and I get it. I but mean, for, you know, the the it's so intriguing because the. They're like warning shots a little. Do you know what I'm saying? What yeah, I, they're, they're yeah. right. They're shot over the bows. Right. Saying, you know, there, there's some stuff wrong on a short-term basis here right. that you're not really supposed to see it in an uptrend. And if you look at the, you know, the, the bottom window uh, is the 10-day trend, which is yes. okay. Uh, the next window up is a five-day. Normally, you like that up around 1.4. Then the next window up is a two-day trend. You like to see that up 1.5. I'm thinking if we do get a pullback here, Either we test the 480 area, which is the January low, or Monday's low, which is close to 490. Yeah. I bet those trends would jump up there, you know, signaling in another bullish uptrend, you know, or we got enough panic to get another trend going up. So I, I think this is a little of a shakeout to get some fear back into the market, get some more energy in the market. Uh, uh, to possibly push it higher is what I'm thinking. No, no, absolutely. So. And folks, if you're watching Tiger TV, you know, you're going to see, I just I just popped another chart up here, Tom, uh, Tim, with those numbers you just gave us, just so they can see the two volume spikes as well as the numbers, you know, because what ends up happening, folks, okay, is that when you have numbers before they get there, 
it's so cool because now you know what to look for. Do you know what I mean? You're going to look for yeah, fast price destruction. You're going to look for the trend going dramatically higher. You're going to look for everyone bailing out. And you're going to uh, people uh, say you're out of your mind if you go long. And you get all this together, right. and it's yeah. before yeah. the fact. Guess what? You'll buy it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, they always say, you know, you, you're, you're stepping up in front of a freight train. Well, not really. You know, not, you're, that's, you're stepping in where the train's going to stop. Listen, you, know, we're, we're, so you and I have been doing we, this long enough. We know that these big, deep, you know, this won't be a deep retracement, folks, but I can tell you something, you know, you get a deep retracement, that's where all the money's made, man. And that's buying yeah. it. That's buying it. Stay right there, folks. Yeah. Tim and I are going to be coming right back. The... Uh, S&Ps right now, they're up 280, and don't forget, we are going to be on a holiday, which is a beautiful thing. You get four-day work week next week, and, uh, you know, the, the dollar, you know, bottom line is going the right way for us, so we'll see whether that turns in the next couple days. Stay right there. Tim and I come right back. Welcome back, folks. Tim Moore, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate the growling and prowling with us out here. So, Tim, where, where, which chart would you like to go to? Actually, let's get back to three real quick. Okay, you know, I have it. Your listeners, how, you know, how do you figure out where you're going to find support? You're yes. going to find support where you're going to find panic. If you don't have any panic, you don't have any support. So uh, on um, this chart, chart the second window up is the five-day average of the trend, and the, and the next window up, third window up from the bottom is the two-day trend. Yes. I'm thinking when this gets this pullback, Potential pullback. It hasn't happened yet, but we have two selling climaxes that I think at some point is going to be tested. Yes. So if we do get those tests, or at least the two day will get up to 1.5, if not the five day, get up to 1.4. And when you got that, you're, you're near a low. Nice. And so that's, that's what you're going to be looking for. So, uh, you know, so, you know, the faster the better. I and mean, when they really slam the, market hard right that's usually a real good sign if it just kind of crawls down yeah that's a real bad that's sign a problem i got you're it. probably not going to get any panic yeah and you're going to keep going down so, now, now folks okay uh, remember if you're in the car i know you can't be looking at the vote photos at the same time remember it's archived because tim set this chart up really cool man he has on the top part he has where those two high volume days are he has red lines that are going across it you're going to match that up with the first box that's coming down with the trend and the thing that's so cool about this folks okay is that we all know that yeah you can have support resistance and all this okay but when you have something that confirms and brings the probability up higher it's a whole different ball game and as tim's explaining to you you know the faster it goes in this case we're talking about down the better off it would be because the trend would go up there'd be more fear in the marketplace no one wants to buy it and guess what we buy fear because <laughs> yeah. we right. love love. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty much how it works. You know, the last low we had in uh, you know December and in mid January that that pink area I shaded there. Yes, notice that the trends jump up there, kind of giving you a good clue that that sideways pattern was a you know a consolidation pattern. Right, so it wasn't a topping pattern. So, yeah, that's why I put that there for And so. we also have to remember that, you know, uh, the chart, folks, okay, and I'm sure that most of thousands of people out there have been following us, that when the uh, chart, when the summation index came, you know, under the 700 and then went over the 1,000, that that's where we're at for 2024. So you always want to keep that in mind also, which is really cool, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's that's point. We we can talk about two uh, chart two real quick. Okay, uh, that's that RSI thing. Yeah, I was going to bring it. that summation up index up again. I'm thinking, well, everybody's get tired. No, of that's that. cool. No, I, but, listen, man, I appreciate it. This is awesome. Okay, so I got the IRS I up here. Yep. Yeah, well, you know the RSI when it gets to eighty. Normally, a lot of times you're at the halfway point of the move up. And we had 80, I think it was January 18th or something. I don't remember. Yep. But um, so on a bigger time frame, we're in a probably a trending market. You know, not every week is going to be up, you know. But uh, so this kind of gives you a bigger clue that when you get 80 on the RSI, that shows a lot of momentum behind the market. Yes. And momentum just doesn't run. Uh, it just doesn't quit and go the opposite direction. Momentum carries forward. So, uh, on a bigger time frame, this looks, you know, it's bullish. It's a short-term time frame. Probably over the next couple of weeks, maybe a month, we might see a, 
a, a base billing pattern here or something. Yeah, so. no, no, I, exactly. You know, the time-wise, you know, it's interesting, Tim. Time-wise, this is setting up really nice to get a little pullback because, you know, you're 10 days, 10 trading days away from March, which would be window dressing, right? So there's plenty of time to get down there, wreck some, you know, technicals, go after the, go after those lows, and then all of a sudden, you know, window dressing comes in. And they say, okay, oh, oh, sorry, that's right. I want to go back topside. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, it could be. So, yeah. Okay, well, we can go to chart. Okay, we got to uh, four charts. We can go to chart five. Okay. Let's see. Uh, here's. There's going to be good news and bad news on this. Okay, Anyhow, good. This is the uh, uh, GDX. This is right. This is uh, yeah the daily inflation deflation ratio, and RSI is at twenty twenty seven on the uh, daily, and so a lot of times if you go at the bottom charts GDX and I circled in red yes. the times when the RSI is below um, uh, thirty, and it's normally they come at short term lows, so that's the daily. Now you flip over to chart number six. Okay. You got the weeklies uh, at RSI at 30 also. So you got the dailies and the 30s, or dailies and the weeklies, RSI at 30. So you're probably looking at a little bit bigger low since the daily and, and weekly RSI are, are both at lows here. So you got some sort of a, a low billing here. Market really hasn't moved much since August of last year. It's pretty much just gone sideways. So we now take a look at kind of going fast here, but I want to get this in. Yep. Chart number seven. Okay. Good. Got it. And this is a chart that uh, we we've shown it the past, and we talked about it in the past. But anyhow, the bottom window is the fifty day average of the up down volume. Right. When it gets gets below minus twenty, which it is right now, is minus sixteen and a half. Um, uh, actually, I have this chart all the way back to when GDX began. Yes. And almost 9% of the time, this chart works. And what happens, it goes sideways. Okay. And that's So you're going to have a balance. Your bottom is probably in this vicinity, but it's not going to go up much. And that's okay. the, the flaw. It's not the flaw. It's what the market's going to do. Uh, so sometimes these it goes at a minimum two months sideways up to six months. The last time we had this thing triggered was July of last year. Uh, it came in an October low. Uh, then we had a rally, but the market went sideways from uh, July to October. Finally got a rally before that, went kind of sideways to down a little bit of July of last year. I'm thinking, you know, we're, we're down. We're probably at a base period here, but we're probably going to go, uh, go sideways probably into July again. A lot of times July his uh, seasonality is a bullish period. Drive everyone so crazy, those, right? Yeah, because we had, a, I mean, the GDX had some monster volume yesterday, man. I mean, a Monday. I mean, it came, you know, yeah. it came down hard and fast. But I, I, I get it. Building cause, yeah. folks. Building cause going yeah, sideways drives everyone cause, crazy, so but that's what it takes. Side. So, you know, this market's really kind of just dull here, and it's going to remain dull. Probably you're going to get seminal weight in a bullish category time you come in July. So it'll bounce up probably here, come down a little bit, probably test the current lows we're in right now or the, thereabouts. Yeah. They'll really go nowhere in between now and, and maybe, I don't know what day it's going to start going up, but it's, it's usually months of, of sideways movement here. So not up much, not down much, just not much to yeah. do. You know, so. it's interesting, Tim, because what I'm hoping for is that the I think the S&P, you know, comes back and tries to get to one of those levels that we've been talking about and below it. And I'm hoping that that's when the test comes on the GDX also. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, faster, because if it's faster versus it's slow, it would help, I think, show that, okay, are there more sellers or buyers? Do you know what I'm saying? So... We'll see. Yeah, yeah, man, it's, it's hard to say. Yeah, so, well, listen, man, it's always a pleasure. Out, so it's, it's a lot of, probably a lot of nothing on GDX for the next, you know, at least a couple of months, maybe three, four months. Yeah. So, it's always a pleasure, yeah. Tim. Thank you so much, and uh, have a great weekend. We look forward to speaking to you on Tuesday. All right, thank you. Thanks, man. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.